heard that term, I'm sure that quote, be the change you want to see in the world by Gandhi. This is actually what he wrote to reflect on our own inner and what we mirror to the world. And he's speaking about we but mirror the world. All the tendencies present in the outer world are to be found in the world of our body. If we could change ourselves, the tendencies in the world would also change. As a man and woman changes his own nature, so does the attitude of the world change towards him. This is the divine mystery, supreme, a wonderful thing it is, and the source of our happiness. We need not wait to see what others do. So I'm going to just start off with the leadership myth that comes from the book. And that is, if I don't have a team, I can't lead. Each of you are in different positions. You're either maybe just starting out or you've been in the work that you've been doing. Maybe you're supervising others, but um, we're all um, leaders in, in development. And that's really the essence of my philosophy is that everybody is, is developing their leadership. Um, and it's, we're always in practice in regards to that leadership. And leadership is about inspiring and influencing. We're in constant movement, we're in growth, um, evolution how you are even last term to how you are now, even in this term or how you will be in the future, you're, you're continually growing. And so in regards to self-management, um, we know that this time has been increasingly stressful. And so that aspect of leadership is how we manage our emotions, our energy, our time, our attitude, our responses. Really, it's about the inner and outer states of our mind and heart. And so um, it, it really is challenging. I think now is a challenging time to be a leader. And when I look at the leaders out front, um, when, I, when I see the governor or the president or even in Canada, by how they're managing that in what they're saying or how they're responding, um, that that are takeaways so lead um, your supervisors by your positive example the premise of of john maxwell's work and his book is it doesn't matter what position you are in an organization you are a leader and that you can influence at any place in where you're at so you can lead and that's called lead up lead your supervisors by your positive, positive example. And so it's based from, from that internal work, that internal evolving growth that we are doing ourselves, self-examination um, and looking inside, then from that, by our example, we are actually being that role model for our manager in how we we present, how we offer solutions, how we seek to understand the goals of our manager, how we can support them in achieving the vision. So um, that 360 um, degree is seeking a partner with your manager and lighten the load um, and be willing to do what others may not be willing to do and builds your influence and um, the, your reputation in regards to peer to peer and that 360 degree leader gains the respect of, of, of team members. And so when, when there's that trust built up and that time um, or, organizations are more receptive to change. I don't think change can, can occur in a, in a toxic, gossip, negative environment, because that just really people are not in the, the mind frame 
to make changes because to change takes an incredible amount of courage and risk. We have the capacity to build trustworthy, sincere and caring relationships with our team members. And that's a part of that 360 degree leadership. And, and again, uh, creating an ethical and compassionate relationship leads to success, is the atmosphere that creates success. The last one of um, the concept of the 360 degrees leadership is the concept of leading down. And, and this is where you might be in, in your workplace. You have a manager, supervisor responsible for you and your growth and your leadership. So really, it's not about so much about a top-down leadership. It's really about investing. Whoever is the leader, it's really about investing into, the, into that person that they're responsible for. It's about adding value to help other people succeed. So when I've been in management, it really truly is about how, what it's asking that question of the people that I'm responsible for and saying, what is important to you? Where do you want to go in your, in your, your professional world? Where do you want to um, be? in five years or 10 years or what are your goals? So really drawing on that person's inherent inner potential and fostering growth. Finding for the gold in the other is really taking interest in that person and mining the gold in them, seeing the gold, seeing the jewels and really focusing on that. I think sometimes it can be so um, easy when things go sideways in a work situation to focus on the, the hurt or the woundedness or um, really I think that leaders look, look at that and see how that can be managed but also see, see the gold in that person. Um, leadership again, building relationships, mentoring and coaching, that really is a part of that growth mentality and developing the giftings and strengths in that other person and bringing recognition to that, verbalizing that, recognizing that. And lastly, leadership is about acknowledging areas to grow as well. But what I can speak to that is there's a way in which to support that and to speak that in a way that empowers that person to expand and strengthen. Good leaders will, will look at that opportunity to see the potential of that person to grow and, and that room to grow and to develop that person. Acknowledging, yes, we all have areas that to grow. People are going to grow in a place where they feel nurtured and when the, where there's trust. And so I think that most importantly is building that foundation for that atmosphere, for that, for that potential in that person to grow. That's really important. No one's going to grow in a place of fear or intimidation or toxicity. So that is my little bit of added value to the practice experience.